Hey guys, Blazin here. Before this video begins, I want to mention a couple things. One is that while the Gravity Hammer's designation name is T2EWH, I'm going to call it the Gravity Hammer for the rest of the video, except the intro for simplicity's sake. Two is that there may not be a lot of multiplayer footage for this video because, well, the Gravity Hammer isn't too common of a weapon to find in matchmaking, so you might see some firefight footage mixed in. Now I'm going to turn around and hit the living shit out of Jim with this thing, and the video will begin, alright? Okay, Jim, are you ready? Jim? Where'd that bitch go? Hey guys, Blazin here. Welcome to my analysis on the T2 EWH. About today, guy, about today, please! First strike! Alright, as usual, let's cover the development history first. The UNSC first encountered this weapon in 2526, and was still under investigation by 2552. The gravity hammer dates back to the war totems wielded by chieftains on Doisak. Within the brute's barbaric culture, in addition to being a powerful weapon, the warhammers serve as the ultimate symbol of clan leadership, taking an almost religious significance among the brutes. The ceremonial hammer of a pack or a clan is only passed to another brute if that brute in particular can best a chieftain in ceremonial combat. The mantle of leadership passes along with the weapon. Following the brute's absorption into the Covenant hegemony in 2492, the Warhammers were modified with Forerunner technology reverse engineered by the Covenant. The aesthetic and operational design of this gravity hammer is tailored for eponymous clan. The Gravity Hammer served dual purposes as a weapon, as well as defining ceremonial vestige of the clan leadership, and is thus typically wielded by a chieftain or other high-ranking members. This Gravity Hammer was used by brute forces deployed in the continent of Apaz on Reach, during the Covenant's assault on the planet in 2552. So basically the brutes were just using a regular big-ass hammer for a long time. It wasn't until the Covenant came in and integrated the gravity part of the hammer. Hence why before, they were probably just called Warhammers, I guess. <laughs> Moving on to trademarks, there's only two on both sides. A, what I assume is a traditional brute marking, and I think a red covenant marking at the bottom of the hammer. I assume that's there because, as I said before, the covenant were the ones that integrated the gravity drive into the hammer. So it makes sense that the covenant marking is on the weapon. Features of the gravity hammer include a counterweight to balance out the weapon at the bottom. The handle has a bunch of brown wrapping all over. At the back of the hammer it includes a huge fucking blade, which is made out of tungsten alloy. And of course, the hammer itself integrated with the gravity drive. Moving over here a bit, there are these ports that you can see sticking out. They sort of help the user swing the hammer around easier and assist to produce the gravity shit effectively. I assume anyways. It makes sense in my head. Destination move. The gravity hammer can get about 12 swings out at max capacity and each swing takes about 8% of the energy. The reserve energy is 100% and the, I guess, swing rate I got was around 55 swings per minute. Is that even a thing? Max effective range is 4.54 meters. As far as damage output in TTK goes, well, you're dead. First strike. Moving on, I've also tested the gravity range on the hammer. In this test, I found that around 5.21 meters is the radius where shields will break. And the max gravity radius I got, I guess, was around 7.45 meters. Now after some further testing with this weapon, I got curious. What else can I manipulate with this hammer? 
Well, as you can see, you are able to swat away rocket launcher rockets, and as well as plasma launcher grenades. I've tried other weapons to deflect, such as the grenade launcher, plasma pistol, plasma rifle, needler, uh, plasma repeater, spiker, fuel rod gun, and concussion rifle, but none of them had any effect. In fact, hammering any of the two grenades and grenade launcher have a negative effect because that resulted in those grenade types instantly blowing up in my face. Now the plasma launcher's grenades travel really slow, so you don't have to necessarily swing at them, but against a rocket launcher you could potentially save your own life. However, I must point out that in this test, Jim is shooting directly at me, so most players are going to be shooting at the floor, so I don't know how effective this is in a real scenario, but the possibility of surviving a rocket is there. And of course, the gravity hammer is great against enemy vehicles that happen to be right next to you. Overall, my thoughts on the gravity hammer is that it's fine the way it is. I know the gravity physics aren't as good as Halo 3's, but performing things like hammer jumps and boosting yourself horizontally still works and that's enough for me. Only thing this hammer really lost from Halo 3 is boosting other players over your head. That part has been significantly nerfed and that's the real downside of Reach's hammer. Wish Bungie carried that aspect of the hammer over to Reach or at least not nerf it as bad as they did. And that's going to be it for this video, so if you enjoyed, please leave a like, and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you want to stick around, links to my poop are down in the description. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, peace.